Hi guys and welcome back to my channel Living in Canada. Today I have really really good news that I want to share with you which is that I recently finally 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 got my PR, my permanent residence and I can't tell you how glad I am and how relieved I am because it's been such a long journey for both uh, me and my husband. It was such a long process until we got to this point and now I feel relieved that I uh, finally have a sense of permanency, that I don't have to worry about my, my permit, I don't have to worry about um, extending my permit and wondering whether or not I can stay here and um, continue living here or not. So that's finally been solved and I'm very glad about it. And I know that many of you watching right now, you are perhaps either thinking about coming to Canada or you are in the process of applying for a PR or you have applied and you're waiting for the result and yeah I just thought that it might be useful to you if I share um, a bit about my experience and about some steps in the process leading up to getting my PR but this video is not going to be that detailed. I'm just going to talk about it at a very high level. But um, in the future, I'm going to continue making videos that are related to this, to the process of getting PR, but also in general about um, living here in Canada and at this moment in time, specifically in Toronto, uh, how, how it is to live here, daily life, um, tips, transportation, um, traveling um how to save money here and so on so if you're interested in that make sure that you subscribe and also very importantly make sure that you hit the little notification bell down here to make sure that youtube will notify you each and every time there's a new video for me and also if while watching this video you feel that this is useful to you then i would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button because that would help me to um let me know that you like this kind of content and I will continue making it. So let's go back to um, um, the PR process. So um, I got my PR um, approved, both I and my husband, this year in February 2022, which is very, very recent. And it came quite unexpected because I thought that it would take much, much longer. So that was, that was such a surprise when we got that message from the CIC in our inbox we really couldn't believe it and um i i actually kind of cried because i was i i just felt so relieved i can't tell you what kind of feeling that was and after that uh, there was some paperwork we needed to do and we registered for our pr card um and surprisingly very shortly after i think that was around two weeks for me i got my pr card and this is how it looks like. So I'm uh, covering my details on purpose, uh, but you can see that, yeah, it's a, it's a nice white colored card with my photograph on it. And um, yeah, the photograph is in black and white. And on the back, it has some personal details, including where I landed um, when I got my PR approved. Since when I'm PR, the color of my eyes, brown, my height and on the front of the card it's basically just um, my name my nationality um, ID number sex date of birth and expiration of the card which is um, almost almost exactly five years from now so really what a relief so um, going back um, years years earlier we actually started setting up an express entry profile under my name when uh, we arrived in Canada. That was in 2019. We arrived in 2018, but we started setting up this express entry profile and it was completed, I think, in 2019. Um, and at that time, we thought that if we applied under my name, we might get uh, more more points. And there are some uh, several reasons to that. But anyway. Um, it turned out that we didn't have enough points. At that time, we had around 440, I'm not sure, 443 or 440 something points, which was not bad, but whether, whether the number of points is sufficient or not will always depend 
on um, who else is in the pool. So who else is applying and what kind of score they have, what kind of CRS uh, score there is. CRS is, um, I think, the, the abbreviation of comprehensive uh, ranking score. So if other people have a sc higher score than you, then of course they will get in faster. So that didn't work out and we left it for some time. But then in the next year, in 2020, we applied again, um, but this time through the CEC program, which is the Canadian, um, uh, the, Cana the Canadian Experience Class. Oh my God, it's the Canadian Experience Class. Um, yeah, and both of us now, both I and my husband, we studied here in a postgraduate program. Um, but at that time, because he, he started studying earlier, at that time he had already worked for one full year. And that is the requirement uh, that you need to fulfill if you want to apply for PR through the CEC route, the Canadian Experience class. And uh, oh, by the way, before I continue, I just want to tell you that I am not, uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an immigration advisor. Uh, everything that I'm telling you is just based on my own experience and simply because I want to share um, my experience with you in the hopes that it could help you in some way. So we applied in 2020 uh, through CEC and that was around mid-year. I think that was around June or July. and then we got our invitation to apply um our ita last year in february 2021 so it took less than a year it took around eight uh, eight seven or eight months until we got the the invitation to apply so um with with that in place the next step was that we needed to actually submit the documents so when we set up the express entry uh, sorry not express entry when we set up the cec profile we input all our data about our education our ielts and everything but then after we got the ita we actually needed to prove it by submitting all the documents that 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 was actually true that we had this education and that we had this IELTS score and um, especially work experience. So my, my husband needed to uh, submit his pay stub and letter of reference and there were a lot of documents and you can check it for yourself on the CEC web, CIC website that we needed to submit. So we really rushed to do that as fast as possible because we knew that there were so many people in the pool waiting um, to get their PR. So we. So we really needed to um, hurry up with that. But at the same time, we also wanted to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes and that we really paid attention to details. And so, so it took us quite a while. Um, it took us about, I think, three months until we had every single piece of document together. And then we uploaded everything and we submitted the application and then it was done. And I think that was around May 2021. Oh, by the way, before that, there's one thing that I almost forgot to mention. So when we got our ITA, our invitation to apply in February 2021, we were extremely lucky because as I told you before, our score was, um, uh, his score at this time as the primary applicant was also around 400 something in the low 400s. And um, it, it was just not high enough compared to many other applicants, right? But then at, in that month, we were so lucky because in that month, there was a draw uh, that had the lowest cut of, of score ever. I think it's it's ever, as far as I've seen at least. And the cutoff score, cutoff score at that time was just 75. That was extremely low. So we automatically got in along with uh, 27,000 and so other people who also only had a score of a uh, 100 or 120 and so on. And I'm just going to read you a very short excerpt from this article here from visaplace.com um, which talks about this draw and it said uh, the draw offered 27,332 ITAs invitation to apply to those with a cutoff score of 75. This is the second draw of February. This draw was by far the largest draw with the lowest CRS score we have ever seen. See, so it's actually true. That was the lowest score. And right now, as far as I know, the scores are way, way up again because of COVID and everything. People have been uh, lining up and I think there's a backlog in the application process. So 
the score is much much higher now so we were extremely lucky at that time that um yeah that there was this draw with such a low cutoff score and we could get in yeah so um that was the story about how we got our pr and um for anyone who is um thinking about coming to canada applying for a pr or is in the process um i, I just want to give you a piece of personal uh, advice based on my own experience which is um, no matter whether you think your score is high enough or not um, if you are planning to apply through the express entry program the skilled worker or the CEC program um, it's a really good idea to always have a profile set up meaning that you've already you, you've already set up your profile, you've input your da data to make sure that you are in the pool, even though you do not have enough points yet, right? Because you really never know what happens. At any point in time, the government could change their policy, they could change some of their rules or their strategy for immigration, and suddenly the score could lower. And if you're not in the pool, that, that would be really, really devastating. I, I know of someone who did not um, did not apply, who, who did not register for um, an, an express entry profile, although he, I think, would actually be qualified. He would have had enough points, but he just didn't do it yet because he thought that, okay, I'll just wait later. I, I think I'm not ready yet. Um, I don't know if I have enough points yet and so on. So when that happened, when the score dropped to 75, he wasn't in the pool and he didn't get invited. So really make sure that that doesn't happen to you um, and the other thing um, that I also want to um, advise you based on my own experience is that always take ownership of your own application even though you are getting the help of an agent or an immigration lawyer immigration advisor or, or whoever um, you need to have take ownership of your application because no one will care as much about your application and no one will want to get that PR, that permanent residence, as much as you do. So even though you are um, enlisting the help of an agent or so, just keep in mind that they have many other clients and so much other work they, that they need to take care of. So even though they're trying to do their best, something might slip through the cracks and they might have missed some detail and something could be lacking in your application. So I think while it's a good idea to get um, somebody else's help, especially someone as experienced as an immigration lawyer. Um, do, don't just rely on that. You still need to do your own due diligence, your own research and check the details, check the details of the application and, and everything to make sure that you increase the chances of getting your um, PR approved. Yeah, so I think that was it for today. In the following weeks and months, I will be uploading more videos um, about how we got our PR card and some other things related to um, OHIP card, how we uh, updated, renewed our OHIP card after getting PR. So if you don't want to miss that, and in case you haven't, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care and see you again next time.